So let's talk about the new scanning feature on ZBrush for iPad. Now, once I open up ZBrush for iPad, you can see that now below the new sculpt button, we have a capture button. And if we press this, you can now see that my camera is activated and I'm using my camera to center that in a position of the object that I want to scan. And once I do that, you can see that there's this little cube that pops up that would usually match our object. But in this case, I'm using this to scan a tree, which is a very large object. So I'm going to have to readjust this little cube by adjusting these dots and controllers to rotate that cube and resize it to match whatever object that I want to scan in my environment. And once I finished adjusting my scan area, I can press the button that says start capture on the top right corner. And now you can see that there's these little dots that start to appear like a point cloud. And then there's this little dial right at the bottom of our point cloud, which shows the pictures being taken as I walk around the object with my iPad camera. Now you have to keep doing this and go all the way around the object until you complete one full cycle around it. Now once that's complete, ZBrush is going to tell you, hey, you have completed your first pass, and then it's going to ask you if you can flip the object. This is applicable in a scenario where you're scanning a smaller object, where you'd flip it around to scan a different section of the object. In this case, we can't, so we're just going to click can't flip the object. And now it's going to repeat the process again. And you're going to have to scan it again, and this time from a different position. Since we can't flip the object to scan it from a different angle, we're going to actually position our iPad differently in order to scan it again. In this case, I'm just using a lower angle to scan all the way around the object once again. And again, once you're done, it's going to tell you, hey, we need three scan passes. Now, the more pictures that you take, the better result that you're going to achieve with this scanning feature. And you can see on the top of our screen, it's showing 73 out of 1,000 pictures that we have captured. We suggest that you take at least around 100 pictures, but the more the merrier. The more pictures, the more points are going to be generated through all of those pictures. Hence, your result will be a lot more true to life when it generates your 3D model. Now, once we finish up that part of the process, tap finish, and now ZBrush will just generate a model. Usually this process takes up a few minutes, and you can see it only took a few seconds. Now it says the model is ready. We can click open. Now we have our model pop up on our screen, and we can rotate around. You can check to see the material. I changed this to a flat color. And not only that, but your model is captured with UVs and a texture map associated with it. Meaning that what we can do is come over here to our tool palette and under texture map, we can clone that texture. And once we clone that texture, we can go to the texture palette, either on the little texture button on the left hand side of the screen or through the texture palette on our palettes menu on the right hand side of the screen and click make alpha. Once that is done, now we have that texture as a black and white image loaded into our alpha palette meaning that we can go over to the displacement map tab on our tool palette and load that up as a displacement map. And then you can turn on the mode button on the displacement map. And now you can start previewing what that displacement map will look like. Obviously we need some resolution for that. So we're gonna subdivide the model a little bit. And then once we subdivide the model, go back to your displacement map and click apply displacement map. And now you see that we get a bunch of detail on our model that we didn't have before, driven by the texture that it's captured from the real world object. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.